happening? I'm Will, and this is Pumbaa. Join us as we travel the Kentucky Adventure Tour. The Cat is a 900 plus mile loop around the hills and mountains of southeastern Kentucky. It's about 60% off-road Jeep trails, coal mining and forest service roads, and 40% rural, narrow, twisty paved roads through some of the most beautiful, remote, and rural areas of Kentucky. This is Uncle Rob. Some of you may recognize him from the YouTube channel Overland Generation. Rob has spent the last few years traveling all over the United States with his 93-year-old granddaddy. Rob and I met a few years ago on our trip to LBL where my buddy Kurt's kids called him Uncle Rob, so the name stuck. Rob's a Kentucky native and he's traveled the cat many times. Rob told me that I had to travel the cat and insisted that I give him a call to tag along whenever I do. I met up with Uncle Rob on Saturday to spend some time with him before meeting the rest of the group on Monday morning to hit the trail. We met just outside the Daniel Boone National Forest near the Red River Gorge to do some hiking and sightseeing. The Red River Gorge is a really cool area of Kentucky that's filled with tall cliffs and sandstone arches that are very similar to the ones that you'll see out west. I found out later that this is a super popular area for rock climbers, and there's an interesting side story about that, but you'll have to wait until the end of the series for it. Meanwhile, check out these awesome trails. Check this out, huh? We're in an old rock overhang here, part of the Daniel Boone National Forest. Rob's telling us that there's a bunch of these all throughout. Hundreds. Hundreds of them. This is pretty cool though. Wasn't that far of a hike to get down here. I will tell you one thing though, the bugs here in Kentucky, these flies just dive bomb your ass. So I had to shimmy my way down that little cliff right there using those trees. Puma's up there. We're gonna try to get him through the cracks and crevices here. And I'm on the edge of this little rock. Yeah. I hope the view's worth it when we get up there, buddy. What do you think, huh? Come on, come here. You're fine. Come here. After a little bit of coaching, I finally was able to get Puma to trust me enough to carry him down this rock face. This was definitely pushing both of us out of our comfort zone, but we eventually made it through with no problems. Hopefully Puma gets a little bit better at this, because as you can see, it's freaking him out. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Hope. Stay. See? Wasn't that bad, buddy? Just a few more obstacles and we came across this beautiful overlook. Believe it or not, I think the Red River is actually down in between those trees. I'm pretty sure this is the same rock that Simba was held off of. We climbed down to get here. Now it's time to get out. Dude, that was a legit f***ing <laughs> And then we had to lift an 80 and 100 pound dogs up the thing first, you know? They fared better than we did. Sure did. All right, let's keep moving. Come on. Shelter we trade. And it's what? It's Kentucky's longest hiking trail. The longest hiking trail in Kentucky. Well, you're going to see it because what happens is the Shelter We Trace and the Kentucky Adventure Tour have a shared path together. So, I will see it in the comfort of the Forerunner. Right. And that would be the only spot of that trail yeah, that I ever exactly see. exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the Red River Gorge, which is what we just looked at. We're yeah, we're in it. Yeah, you're in it right? This is part of the Daniel Boone National Forest. The Kentucky Adventure Tour, does it go through here as well? It does. It does, okay. This dog is like way thirsty. He's like, dude, please. Yeah, it's like 90 something degrees out here. I ain't gonna lie. Your boy's hot. It's definitely hot out here. He ain't even waiting. He's just like, yo, let me let me hit on that. <laughs> Damn, dude. I get it. I'm about to do the same thing. As far as the, the uh, what's the all in the Yeah, he just decided he wanted to hurry up and get in. He was tired of waiting. Yeah. Pumba is definitely afraid of this little bit of a ledge right here, so he's gonna have to work himself through it because we're going down there. All right, man, you're gonna have to figure it out. I tried to help you. It's just what it is. Come on. There he goes. <laughs> Dude, that water is way good, man. Yeah. I didn't want you to make me in that water. Come on. Look at Daisy. Yeah, yeah. she's like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't blame you, Daisy. I told you you'd like it, silly. 
finally got in it. Jeez. He was definitely skeptical. He's a fan now, though. That is some cold water right there. Dude, look at that. Yeah. So this is called uh, Moonshiner's Arch. That's and once you get up here, like, it's pretty cool. This one has kind of a through way yeah. for the smoke to go out the back side. So the legend is, or the history is, right there. Evidently, this is where the still, it's called Moonshiner's Arch for a reason. And cave right over, you saw the cold water right down the way. I think maybe it all ties in, but this is evidently where the still was set up and the smoke would go out. Moonshiners. This whole area is filled with all kinds of arches and little areas within the rocks just like this, which is really impressive for the southeast United States. This stuff is normally only seen out west, or so I thought. Bro, that's a cave? Yeah, you're not supposed to go through here anymore because they've got this endangered bat that's supposed to be in there. And huh. It's just dangerous anyway, but this was awesome. You, you could go through, you had to shimmy up waterfalls and like slide sideways chest to chest chest to rock it, it was pretty tight coming through uh very difficult took about a half hour i would say this is what 220 yards or so in length and it's pretty fun 200 yards maybe damn yeah it's we're closed off now cave dwelling i don't know man I might find myself in a life-altering situation if I end up going down through there. It's nice and cool. It's a nice, really nice summer escape. Yeah. And this water right here is ice cold going through there. It's super nice. That's the draw to this. It's probably 55 degrees in there and uh, real nice and cool. Well, let's go somewhere where we can get in the cool water. Let's do it. That's the sign that says that the cave's closed, so you can't get in there. Yeah, it says. Because of bats. Look at how that rock bat is. With fungus. Oh, bat with fungus. I don't know. So, yeah, we don't want any fungus bats. That's what got us in this predicament we're in in this world right now. Yeah, we better Look skedaddle. at that right there. We better skedaddle. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say, isn't Kentucky one of the places that's got like caves all over the place? Uh, yeah. Like all underground, all throughout Kentucky, you can find all kinds of different caves, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Mammoth Cave is here, which is the, I think the world's largest cave. Um, there's another large one in New Mexico. We're going down here. Yeah, a lot of caves around here. That's pretty cool. I think I, uh, some Kentucky, of them open, some of them are closed. Kentucky has more miles of waterway than any other state, too. I don't know if you knew that. Really? Yeah. Uh, not Alaska, obviously. Right. But, uh, yeah. Kentucky's a pretty cool state. Yeah. It's just hot. It's very humid. Yeah, very humid. This is like South Carolina humidity. It is. Bro, it's so humid that the rocks are sweating. Yeah. Down here, this is the spot to camp. <laughs> yeah. I bet you there, there's a cave back there that cold air is coming out. Is wow. Is. That's why it's so cold in here. Dude, this is the spot right here. Yeah. We could just set up in here. Yeah. You used to be able to do that stuff. You can't do that now? No. Why? Um, too many people camping. Like this soil is actually alive. Just not, not so much in here. <laughs> I feel like they say that about all wet soil. If you get over off of the beaten path, and you'll see what I'm talking about, but this has just been demolished already. Yeah, know. just turned into mud. Yeah. But this is really badass, dude. Yeah. You can see right above your head there, there's a black stain from, from fire. Huh. That's what all that is. It's all from fire, black stain. And that's, I think, a large part of why they don't want people uh, camping in here. Because they can't just not do a fire. Yeah. Kills me the amount of people who have to have a fire when they're camping. Yeah. Dude, that water is nice. It's shallow, but it's nice. It's always good to have a cool little dip. The only problem is, is walking on wet shoes. I read an article one time that talked about waterproof shoes and like waterproof trail runners and like the way to keep waterproof. And uh, the article, the author of the article had found in his experience, just don't keep them waterproof, just deal with the water. And that kind of made sense to me. I don't know, you do get like blisters, I guess. I don't know, what do you guys do? 
keep your feet dry. How? What do you do? Just in case you needed to be reminded, here's your reminder. Leave no trace. You get you get to hold the camera if you get stuck. Go ahead, bro. All right, turn it to turn it to your passenger side. You're good, Saki. Go. I'll say that's the second recovery Apple's had to make on fairly large vehicles and uh, works like a champ every time. It's always fun when to get to the campsite you have to go through a mud hole that requires four low, right? For the life of me, I cannot figure out why Apple got hung up on such a small obstacle here. I guess the mud in there mixed with the fact that I kind of got off center and got hung up on a little rock. But anyway, with enough gas, we were able to power on. It's like it really wasn't even that bad. The only problem is you get hung up on that guy right there and it's just slick. So yeah. I'm breaking this bad boy out. So check this out. It comes with its own legs, dude. I gotta be honest, man. I'm eyeballing this thing, and I saw yeah. it in your ride earlier. And so look, I'm check this completely out. Completely. These go in here like that. It's the first time I've ever done this. So. What'd you do? You pull the insert out? Ain't that some shit? The insert came out. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. That's not the one I just put on. That's not supposed to happen. That's the one you put on. Yeah. You said not not to put it on there tight as uh, I didn't put Dick's, it tight as Dick's, Dick's headband. Hat band. <laughs> yeah. So that goes to show you, I really didn't have it on there tight at all. Damn. And it just broke. I got to be honest, dude. That camp chef. It's still a badass stove. Is super we good looking. I, I'm like, is, that's though. like a supermodel. Look. That's easy. Yeah, that's yeah, easy. Yeah, that needs to be. Uh, I don't worry about that. That's a nut cert, is what they call that. Yeah, so, I worry about it though because it, like you can't now. Well, sure, we you do? got a problem now, but the problem is that the thing is that is super simple. The difference is is this has got twenty thousand BTUs versus ten thousand BTUs that the uh, that the partner steel gives you. Oh wow, super good looking. Yeah, it's got these little arms that go. Like this. See how they go right here? I want it. That's how it goes. Man, I haven't even seen, seen Now, the best action. part, though, is the flame control. I have already tried the flame control, and the flame control is by far my favorite part it's, of that whole it's thing. It's pretty major, but this thing has got, seriously, some nice contours, man. It is really, I like it. It's put together really 300 nice. 300 bucks. I'm very disappointed they could have done something They could have done something better with my, my rivet nuts there, but, yeah. Yeah, man. Not bad, right? Are, have you not used it? Uh, I have not cooked cooked on it. I used it as just trying it out to see what the flame control, how fast it gets some water boiling. So we're gonna yeah, use see it blue. For, yeah, we're gonna use it for the first time tonight. Now you are doing an interesting thing that I'm actually kind of admiring. I have a one pound setup which seems to run out just at the right moment, or should I say wrong moment? You have a five, five pound. Yes. Tell me about that. How'd you, what's... Five pound is probably the number one hack that you can have in this whole thing is, if you do this a lot, get you a five pound tank. You don't have to worry about the one pound canisters and transporting them and refilling them and doing all that craziness. How long does a five pound last you? A month out on the trail. Three months if you're just, if you're a weekend warrior and you go out there and you just play around. So what do you got? You got quick connection there. You've got quick connection. Well, it's um, not quick. It's just standard, but it's a standard. high pressure connection on this guy. Yeah. Which is new, but it's a solid connection. I like it. And that fits like that. I don't know how much I like the fact that it's right up front versus being in the back where I could put that. I doesn't bother me. Mine's off to the front. It doesn't. Okay. Off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that, we'll, that's we'll put a, that open. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's electric. 
I don't think. It, well, it's electric, but it's like done. Sure. It's not. You don't it's have to put igniter. a battery. It's a igniter. Yeah. It's got an so igniter. at any rate, come look at this. This simmer. That's all the way up. That's all the way down. So the thing with my stove, which is absolutely fantastic, I love it to death, but there is no... No simmer. Nothing. That's the and, problem that I had out of the Coleman stove, was there's no simmer. So that was the whole big thing, and that's the reason that I wanted one of these stoves so bad. This has that better flame control. And it's all stainless steel, which I don't know if you know this or not, but all of your marine, all of your marine grade stoves and, and, and grills and stuff, they're all made out of stainless steel. Yeah. Stainless steel is good. That's going to last you. The Long only time. thing that I would change about this is the country in which it's made. That's it. We can do this here at home. We don't need to send this off to get done. We could do this here at home. I know some craftsmen that can, that they would be happy to tackle a project like this, but it's not going to be cheap. Even if you were to make this yourself out of stainless steel, if you think, okay, well, I can make a stove out of stainless steel because I've thought that way before. This is a solid built unit. I've, There's no way, shape, or even though the leg broke off, my we're talking first, about a pop rivet that failed. My first thoughts when you popped the tailgate yeah. was, "Wow, what is that sexy piece of equipment?" And I'm and it's been you, bouncing in the back here because is. I don't have any, I don't have anything to. Yeah. It's it's, it's solid. solid. Yeah, this is a one nice piece it's a, of it's equipment. It's a nice piece of kit, dude. Yeah, we got a chicken thigh, boneless, skinless. I got a small thing of olive oil. I got a fajita mix. I've got my spice set here, which is awesome. And then I'm just gonna cook it up on the uh, the old mountaineer here. Let's see how it does. Don't mind Pumbaa back here lapping up the water. <laughs> so my garlic powder has turned into rocks here, even though I put rice in there. So I don't know how I'm gonna do that action. I guess I'm just not gonna have garlic today. Man, what a legit setup. This thing cooked perfect. And it didn't cook too much, didn't cook too little. It is just perfect, right on the money, man. Yeah, it's definitely worth the investment to get a good stove, especially if you do this a lot. If you don't do this a lot, don't do it. Just get you a regular old standard stove. You're gonna be fine. But if you're a fan of cooking and you do this a lot, spring for the good stove. That's the one I got. It's definitely worth it. Put a little Valentina hot sauce on that thing. Ooh, look at that. What? The rest of the night was spent doing all the fun activities we love so much about camping. Sitting around the campfire, looking at the stars, telling stories about our past adventures over ice cold beers. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this first episode of this series. There's so much more to come, so make sure that you stay tuned. If you like what you saw, make sure that you hit that like button. If you want to see more of it, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace.